A couple examples that we're going to put up here, uh, a number of them from uh, um, a well-known company. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, federal registration uh, design mark to my left, uh, you're going to uh, see uh, um, three colors, uh, uh, white, uh, blue, and red, and uh, the aesthetic shape of it. This serves as a brand identifier for a soft drink. And uh, um, you probably realize the source of origin is Pepsi. Uh, when you look at the scope of this trademark, it's actually relatively narrow because it is, has no words, it is simply for the logo, and it is specific to the colors. So there's a question whether if we had a variation of these colors, uh, whether there would be a strongest case of infringement as we could if we did not limit it to the actual color. So in contradistinction, we can look at another variant of this uh, particular design, and you notice that this one is in black and white. Well, what's the difference? Well, when it's in black and white, we call that a stat, and with the uh, proper trademark filing, that can cover any color variation uh, uh, of this particular design, and therefore the trademark registration has a greater breadth. So uh, we rarely see uh, too many federally registered logos and designs that are specific to color, because if they're going to grant it to you for any color, why limit it? Uh, even a more narrow federal trademark registration is when you see uh, a logo and design in conjunction with words. So here we have the uh, Pepsi logo in addition to the words Pepsi. So uh, there's always a question that if we use the logo but we used a different word, uh, would there still be infringement? Uh, maybe, but it certainly wouldn't be as strong a case. Uh, if we change the color in the design of the logo but we kept the name the same, uh, we may have a case of infringement, but it wouldn't be as strong with, if we didn't have a broader trademark. We're going to take one more look at another uh, federally registered trademark. Here we have Pepsi that is a pure black and white stat with the word mark itself. Uh, but notes that because it's black and white, it is a stat drawing, that it's going to cover any coloration of that. But at the same time, it's still limited. Uh, that we have a logo, and in addition to that, we also have the word. So there's always a question that we could proffer a, uh, a, a logo that is identical but has different words, and then try and make an argument that there's a commercially distinct uh, difference between uh, these two uh, presentations of the mark. So the better way to handle this is less is more. So we file a federal trademark registration just on the logo without the words, and therefore uh, um, even if somebody adds something to it, they add words, they add color, they add design, uh, we've isolated one of the brand characteristics of it, and we have a better case of asserting infringement. One of the common things that every company realizes is they get very much attached to a particular design, a color scheme, a font. Uh, a design that uh, they absolutely love when they first roll it out. A few years go by and then they hate it. And then they go back to the graphic design artist and they come up with something that is more trendy, uh, more consistent with the direction that the company is going. So it's very, very easy to look back on abandoned federal trademark designs, particularly with logos, and see how uh, even really well-known companies have abandoned a large number of federally tra uh, registered trademark designs because their design evolves. However, word marks generally endure. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, different uh, um, presentations of Coca-Cola, of Exxon, of Kodak, of Pepsi, uh, but the words stay consistent. And that's why we always put a priority on what's called filing a standard character claim. Those are the alphanumeric characters, P-E-P-S-I. And when trademark attorneys uh, uh, reference uh, um, trademarks and we send emails out and capitalize every word of a trademark, we're not yelling. Uh, we're actually just designating the difference between a brand uh, as a trademark versus the words in a different context. So if I was writing something about the Pepsi Cola company, I might write that in regular title uh, uh, capitalization. But when I talk about Pepsi, the brand specifically, I'm going to go ahead and capitalize each and every single letter to, to denote that that is a specific brand, a trademark.
So we can take a look uh, uh, at a potential trademark infringement here where we have Pepsi, which is a standard character claim. And then we also have Pepsi that has a, uh, um, a target, a bullseye, an arrow. It's in a different font. It's in a different color. But would there be infringement? Absolutely, because they're using P-E-P-S-I in any co uh, color, in any font, in any capitalization. Uh, so the standard character claim is generally the broadest type of trademark protection that a company can get. It's probably going to be the trademark that is going to last the longest and the one that's going to be renewed uh, 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 in perpetuity if the trademark is used properly. So when we look at the scope of trademarks, uh, at the very uh, end, uh, as far as the broadest trademark, again, it's a standard character claim. Uh, next would probably be a logo uh, that is a stat, pure black and white. Uh, as we get a little bit more narrow, we might present the logo and the word together uh, in black and white, so we're not restricted as to a specific color. Uh, next in scope, or in, in, as we get narrow and narrower, we're going to look and maybe have just the logo with those colors. And maybe that, those colors together form a certain brand identity we do want to protect and it's valuable. And finally, the narrowest coverage that we're going to get is when we include the color, the logo, and the words uh, almost identical to what we're going to present and affix to the product itself. That's the narrowest form of coverage, but if there's an absolute knockoff or counterfeit product, uh, there can be no uh, argument that there was innocent infringement because it's exactly like what we reg registered.